This is the Pipeline Trail in Hamilton's Crown Point neighborhood. The trail runs about 6 kilometers between Ottawa Street and Woodward Avenue. It's filled with small parquets, gardens, and colorful art. But why does this trail exist in the middle of these houses? What kind of pipe does Pipeline refer to? Some third question. All this and more in this episode of Faded Hamilton. Before we talk about the pipeline, we have to talk about that terrible pandemic that everyone's talking about. That's right, I'm of course talking about cholera. Cholera is a disease that causes the body to lose water at an alarming rate, as much as 20 liters in a day. In 1832, Hamilton was hit with a cholera epidemic. Of the 800 residents at the time, nearly a quarter of the population died. At the time, it was believed that cholera was caused by miasma, or bad air, and not much could be done about it. Just 20 years later, the now much larger city was rocked by another cholera epidemic. By this point, cholera was known to be spread in water that contained sewage. The city leaders decided to build a new waterworks to replace the communal wells. This would help ensure that everyone had clean water in their homes, as well as allow the city to build some newfangled fire hydrants. <laughs> this absolute slab of beef, Thomas Kiefer designed the waterworks for the city. He later went on to design systems for Ottawa and Montreal. The waterworks was built far outside the city, here on Woodward Avenue. You may recognize it as the morgue from Murdoch Mysteries. It was opened in 1860 by the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII. It pumps water out of Lake Ontario using two giant steam engines, which were built right here on Hat Street in Dundas by John Garcher Industries. The Hamilton Steam and Technology Museum still maintains them, the oldest confirmed steam engines in all of Canada. The waterworks and pipeline were built with the future in mind. It was designed to serve a city of nearly 100,000, despite the population at the time being just over a quarter of that. To ensure access to the pipe, no buildings were allowed to be erected on the land. Yeah, erected. <laughs> <laughs> to ensure access to the pipe, no buildings were allowed to be erected on the land. But how did it become a trail? We have the Hamilton Wheelmen to thank for that. The Hamilton Wheelmen were a cycling advocacy group. In 1897, they petitioned the city to build a path from the Delta to the beach to make it easier for people to access the resorts and attractions of Hamilton's waterfront. Two years after, a gravel pathway opened, and the current pipeline trail follows nearly the exact same route 120 years later. Let's see what's on the path. From the eastern end when looking from above, you can see it pass between these buildings, then continue on through the Parkview neighborhood. South of Brampton Street, it goes through another industrial section, then passes along the northern boundary of Mahoney Park. After that, it crosses Barton Street, where it really starts in earnest. There's a small garden here, which I'm told looks really nice in the spring. Unfortunately, this footage was taken in early March. From here on, the trail slowly meanders through Homeside and Crown Point connecting three different parks and neighborhoods, until reaching Ottawa Street and the creatively named Municipal Car Park Number 19. Here the pipe took a sharp turn south up to the former Barton Reservoir. The reservoir was essentially a giant bowl capable of holding 50 million liters of water 58 meters above the lake level. There was a park constructed here as well, and a manor for the reservoir's superintendent. You can't access it without committing the very cool crime of trespassing, but there's lots of evidence of the reservoir remaining, such as the standpipe, which is visible from the rail trail, lots of fitted limestone, this pipe, this other pipe, these stairs, and the first fire hydrant in Hamilton. Yeah, that's a, it's a fire hydrant. It's an old fire hydrant from 1859. It's very cool. The city built two monuments to commemorate these events. First, to celebrate the opening of the waterworks, they built the Gore Park Fountain. The current fountain is a reconstruction, but it uses many parts of the original. The second monument is a memorial to the lives lost to cholera. It's in Burlington Heights, tucked away between York Boulevard and the 403. There isn't even a marker for it on Google Maps. These people died because they didn't have access to clean water. It's grossly poetic that this memorial sits in full view of Coote's Paradise, where the city dumped 24 billion liters of raw sewage. Hamilton at the time was called the Ambitious City, 
and it's easy to see why. We were the first city in Canada to build a waterworks anywhere near this size. I hope one day we'll regain that ambition. Until then, we're just left with these examples of faded Hamilton.